If your temperature is 99.2 degrees Fahrenheit, are you running a fever? If you're five foot tall woman, are you freakishly short? And if you give birth to your baby after only 38 weeks, is your baby at risk? Well, the answer to all of those questions is a resounding no. We've been conditioned to think that a cutoff's like 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit for body temperature, five feet four inches for fully grown women's height, and 40 weeks for a normal pregnancy are somehow hard and true facts, when in reality, they're just averages of a distribution of data. And when we ignore distributions, we completely fail to understand the reality of the world around us. Our over-reliance on what are known as measures of central tendency, with averages being the most common of those, is the root cause of countless errors in statistical and data reasoning. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, I'm going to explain why we should stop focusing on averages and start focusing on distributions. Now, to be sure, having single values that we use as cutoffs for decisions is really handy and simple. If it really were the case that if your body temperature exceeded 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, you were sick and should seek medical help, well, that would be great. We'd have a single rule that everyone can learn and follow with no room for personal opinions or subjective interpretations. However, it is almost never the case that these types of rules are as rigid as this. In fact, let's dig into body temperature to make that point. First, a quick history lesson. The reason we've all come to learn that the normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees is because back in the mid-1800s, a German physician named Karl Wunderlich measured body temperature under the armpit from about 25,000 people and found that the average was 30 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, the value for normal comes from measuring a bunch of people and computing a simple average. Which brings us to the question of what is normal for body temperature. Well, we first need to think about how we came to that conclusion about 98.6 degrees in the first place. The original data are hard to come by, but they likely look something like this. What you see here is a histogram, or a graph, that plots the results of every person that Wunderlich measured. The higher the bars, the more people that had that body temperature. So you can see that most people's body temperature is somewhere around 98.6 degrees, but actually, quite a few people had very different body temperatures. In fact, let's simplify this chart a bunch by grouping temperatures like this. Each bar now represents the body temperature of people for each degree Fahrenheit. So for instance, about 20% of people had body temperatures between 97 and 98 degrees. Another 24% or so had body temperatures between 99 and 100 degrees. The point is that actually most people had body temperatures outside of the range of 98 to 99 degrees where 98.6 sits. So even though 98.6 was the average, most people studied had body temperatures below 98 degrees or above 99 degrees. In other words, what was actually most typical in terms of frequency wasn't 98.6 degrees at all. Yes, 98.6 was the average across all people, but there was a lot of variation. If we ignore that variation and instead harp on 98.6 degrees being the right answer to normal body temperature, we are going to make a lot of mistakes about who is sick and who isn't. And in the case of body temperatures, the story gets even more complicated. Some more recent research did basically the same thing as Carl Wunderlich, but did it using body temperatures measured orally for more than 35,000 people and found that the average body temperature was actually 97.5 degrees, a full degree cooler than previously thought. Though even that is just an average with a very similar distribution around it. And beyond that, body temperature isn't some static thing that never changes. In fact, as you can see in this chart, body temperatures changes dramatically across the day for any given person. On average, body temperature is lowest in the middle of the night and highest around midday, with a full 2 degree Fahrenheit swing between those two. So when we say normal body temperature, do we mean normal for the morning, the afternoon, or middle of the night? And even beyond that, this chart is just a chart of averages. Each of those plotted data points has a distribution around it. Meaning that when the chart reports that the average body temperature is 99.4 degrees Fahrenheit at 11 a.m., what they really are saying is that they measured the body temperature of a bunch of people around 11 a.m., and that was the average value, which means that some people were likely much cooler and some were likely much warmer. And none of those people, unless they were actually sick, had wrong body temperatures. Instead, they were all normal and within what we would expect given how much body temperature varies across people in general. I know this is a lot about body temperature, but the point is much bigger. Whenever we consider averages of anything to define what is normal, we completely ignore that those averages come from distributions. In other words, there is a range of what is normal rather than a single value. This is just as true for height of fully grown women with five feet four inches being the average. But if you look at the distribution, you see that around 70% of all women are between somewhere around five feet two inches and five feet seven inches tall. And if you go out a bit more, 95% of women are between four feet 11 inches and five feet 10 inches tall. 
that means that there's no single normal height, but rather a large range of typical heights. The same is true for gestation periods. We get caught up thinking that 40 weeks is normal for how long a pregnancy should last. In fact, about 70% of pregnancies last between 38 and 42 weeks. And if we look at 95% of pregnancies, the range is about 36 to 43 weeks. And beyond that, this range shifts depending on whether the pregnancy is for a single child, twins or triplets and so on, and whether it is a first or a second pregnancy. The point is that when we drill into people's head that 40 weeks is normal, we create a rule that just isn't real. Instead, what is normal is the full range of gestation periods. When we focus on a single value, like an average, we do ourselves a disservice in understanding the reality of any situation we are in. Now, this doesn't just apply to biological measures like body temperature, height, and pregnancy. Any time we compute an average, there is always a distribution of some kind that that average came from. For instance, IMDb movie ratings give us averages, but those come from a large group of people, some of whom like the movie, and some who don't. Just because your opinion doesn't match up with the average, doesn't mean you're wrong or different from other people, just that the average opinion reported doesn't tell you much about the range of all opinions. Or when we hear that the average number of steps taken by able-bodied Americans is about 6,500 per day, what we're missing is that the range of daily steps in able-bodied Americans is actually something like four to 18,000. In other words, there isn't a right answer for what the typical number of steps is. Rather, there is a right range. Though, to be fair, in this case, there might be a right number for the recommended number of steps to take to be healthy, but that's a totally different question. When we ask about what is normal or typical, that range, in this case, is massive. As one final example, at least according to one source, the average number of friends that someone has on Facebook is 338. Does that mean you're socially awkward if you have fewer than that, or a social savant if you have more? Well, of course not. 338 is just the average across billions of users. And even though Facebook doesn't put out information about the distribution of friends so that we can get an accurate range of what is typical, given what we do know about Facebook, that range is likely massive, and most users likely have between zero and thousands of friends. In other words, knowing that the average number of friends happens to be 338 doesn't really tell you a whole lot, but that's the number that gets reported, and that's the number that people anchor on when deciding on whether they have enough friends or not. Which, again, to be super clear, is a completely incorrect way to assess anything, and that's ignoring the more important fact that the number of Facebook friends you have has very little to do with anything that actually matters in the real world, but that's a separate point. Anyway, I hope you get the point here. Stop looking at averages and start looking at distributions. When we want to know what is typical, single values like averages or medians are often highly misleading and miss the bigger picture of what the world is actually like. Finally, if you found this interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you could take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. As always, thanks so much for watching.